Hi everyone, it's time for another Minecraft Creator Update. It is now 1.21.110. Minecraft has entered the Copper Age, and I am super excited to see my new Copper Golem, my boy, my favorite mob of all time, hashtag Copper Golem. Woo, awesome stuff. Uh, but aside from the Copper Golem, we have some amazing new creator features in this release, uh, and I'm here with my fab fabulous colleagues uh, to chat about them. We have Angelica. Hi, I'm Angelica. <laughs> We also have Bryant. Hi, my name is Bryant. I am a PM on the creator team. And Mike. Hey, I'm Mike Amerlon. I'm a product manager on the creator team as well. I work on the docs and some of the tools. Amazing. We definitely, definitely uh, rehearsed that tons. Uh, so we got some great stuff to talk about today. So why don't we uh, kick it off with a few of the topics. So some of the big features today, uh, we're going to talk about some camera improvements. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of new APIs, some amazing new editor improvements. But my favorite feature, biomes. I know that biomes have been a big uh, ask from the community for many, many years. And we have some amazing new features to talk about with biomes today. Partial biomes, biome overrides, all kinds of great, great stuff. All right, so I will go ahead and get started on a biomes overview. So you can check the link in the description below, but we had a previous sample where we customized some biomes. Uh, it was the Chill Oasis uh, biomes that we sort of went ahead and customized. And these are now ready for you to be able to use inside of all of your stable projects that you can share with friends uh, because biomes is coming to stable. Uh, and if you're not familiar with biomes, think of it as basically two capabilities. One is you can override existing vanilla biomes. So in this case, I've got my Chill Oasis, but what I'm really doing is I'm actually overriding the Minecraft colon beach biome uh, that you can see here because I've given it the identifier Minecraft colon beach. And you can see I can customize a number of different of the visual capabilities. This is the this is the resource pack where I'm customizing things like the sky color. I'm giving it a very festive neon green. Uh, nothing says chill beach like uh, neon green skies. And uh, But you can also see that if I go into the behavior pack, I'm also overriding Minecraft colon beach as well. And I'm specifying some you know, custom blocks to use for the surface. Uh, in my case, I've got a custom block called white sands. Let me go back to that real quick over here. Um, I've got this white sand block, so that'll give it a different texture. But the other nice thing about this is I can register some custom tags. And when you register some custom tags, in this case, Chill Oasis, then you can actually go and do things like register some feature rules against those custom tags. So I've got some palm trees, which is one type of feature that creates a, a nice festive tree uh, that looks very palm tree-ish. And that is registered based on checking for that uh, value of has biome tag equals chill oasis. So being able to register custom biomes, you can do a lot of interesting things like customize the surface texture and the sky, but it's also a hook uh, for hooking in a whole bunch of other different features and, and world generation facilities of Minecraft to connect it to your biome. Now, the other way to customize a biome is something called a partial biome. So in this case, I've developed a custom biome called the chill oasis. I'm not overriding the beach, but it kind of works the same as the beach. And you can see that there are a number of different uh, you know, customizations here for this biome, but I'm using this Minecraft Replace Biomes component. And what the Minecraft uh, Replace Biomes component does is it says, here's uh, what I wanna override. I wanna override parts of the desert. I wanna give it a custom amount and a custom noise value. Um, so you are basically taking up a percentage of an existing biome with your own custom biome. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. I'm gonna open up my test biome world like this. And our first stop is gonna be the Minecraft beach. And so what you'll see here is that there's no more, you know, traditional Minecraft beach, but instead uh, what we've got is our custom biome. And so uh, actually this is over the desert. Um, this is actually the replace biome, um, sorry. Um, and you can see that it's actually going ahead and replacing parts of the desert. Um, because I customized the sky for the chill oasis, I gave it this, this, um, very calming uh, red color for the sky color. Uh, but you can also see that in this biome, there's a number of different palm trees. And if I get out of the, the red sky, you can see from afar, it's also using the custom white sand. Um, so this is the partial biome part where I've overridden about 50% of the desert, custom blocks, custom structures, custom sky colors, all these kinds of fun things that you can go ahead and customize. So that's, that's the part. And if I go to my beach, uh, let's see, 3080, 82, like this, you can see it's pretty much the same experience. 
Um, except, like I said, uh, I'm basically taking over all the beaches with my custom biome. And in that case, I changed the sky color to this neon green color. So mission accomplished, but you can see some trees, some tall palm trees, you know, even blending into the village that we have over there. Um, I think you can see it here too, but we also have these nice wave uh, sounds in the background as well. Um, so all those kinds of fun things that are now available in there. So, oh yeah, and I've got custom spawning. These are my little beach fellas, um, my little beach goers. They've got nice little, you know, sunglasses and straw hats. So you can also customize mob spawning once you have that hook of custom biome tags. So this is all, you know, things that you can now take a, uh, advantage of in the content that you share with friends because it's no longer an experimental, it's available for everyone. Uh, so can't wait to see all the cool, fun biomes that you create uh, as part of, you know, changing how Minecraft generates worlds. Okay, so let's go back to the PowerPoint slides real quick. Let's cover some of the APIs. Um, so one of the things we're continually improving is our camera APIs and commands. And so a very common request was this ability to change the field of view. Uh, so we'll see what that looks like in just a second. And also we have this aim assist capability, which is when you, for example, have a boom camera or a follow camera, you want to use aim assist so that you can see what the, what the player that you're looking at is actually pointing at. Um, so aim assist now applies to projectiles. So that's another awesome capability. Uh, that you can take advantage of. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Um, some other APIs that we've added, uh, a loot, loot generation API. So loot tables have a lot of flexibility for being able to randomly choose sets of things that will uh, show up inside of Minecraft. Um, so you can take advantage of those from the API by saying like, oh, okay, um, pretend as if a skeleton has drop some loot, um, but give me the equivalent to what a skeleton would drop, for example, in this area if they were to drop loot. Um, we now have book APIs, so being able to actually read and write content into a book is a pretty big capability. And also uh, the ability to apply impulses and clear the velocity of a player. I know that a lot of times people want to do some interesting physics effects with players, um, so these are two new tools for doing a lot of fun things with that. And then finally, we have some new item inventory components in JSON so that you can implement your own custom uh, items that work like bundles do. Uh, and so there's a number of different JSON components there. So let's just take a quick look at the code behind this. Let's see, let me go into the code for this. Um, so I have a number of different code files here. Um, let's start with a loot. Um, so I've implemented some custom rods um, just as a way to uh, you know, invoke this functionality. I'm using a custom component here. And if you want to create your own custom items, you can do so on mctools.dev. We have a lot of awesome project starters to go build your own custom, you know, items that have all kinds of fun code effects like this. Um, but in this case, I have a very simple loot rod. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the get loot table manager, and I'm going to generate the loot for the block that the item is used on. So uh, basically what you'll get back from that is a set of item stacks. And then with each of the item stacks, what you can do is I'm just going to go say, go spawn that item stack where the thing gets used. All right. So if I just exit out here and I go into my custom world for 1.21.110, one, uh, 1 .21 uh, let's go see. All right. So now I have my loot rod like this. And you can see that when I use it, I go use it um, there you can there you can see it that like when I use my loot rod on this dirt block it's going to spawn little dirt blocks that up here on top of it if I use this you'll see that like every now and again with some probability on the grass you'll get some seeds although not every time so it's basically implementing that same functionality that the loot table has uh, that you see inside of it and you know uh, there is I think some gravel over here so of course when I use this you'll well you'll get some Occasionally, you'll get some uh, uh, some coal or some charcoal, um, and you'll get some gravel blocks from this. So this is just a very quick example of using the loot rod to unlock all of the power that you see inside of loot tables. Uh, next up, let's go take a look at the, let's see, uh, next up is the inventory rod. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the book rod. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so this is just a simple usage of the book APIs. You can see that there's a component here, the item book component. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go set the content to, you know, this is the content of the first page, very original. Um, it's zero based and we're just gonna go return a message. Um, so this is just a very 
quick and easy API for sending the content into books. Let's go take a look at what that looks like. Uh, all right, hold on a second. I'm gonna give myself uh, a writable book like this. Okay, so now we have this book and it is empty. Got to show you the magic trick before. Um, and now the magic trick after, um, I used the book rod. And what that did is it changed the content of the first page and the second page. You can use things like raw text. So if you want a little bit more uh, flexibility for having dynamic bits of text that get inserted into the book, you can do that as well. Or if you want to use localized text, uh, you should be able to use raw text as well. Um, so yeah, that's a, a quick look at the book functionality. It's very powerful. Books are a hallmark of almost every add-on that they use to uh, give you some instructions. So hopefully it's a little bit more flexibility for nice instructional books to show up inside of your Minecraft world. Uh, and then the final thing I want to show is, uh, let's see, let's go back and take a look at this camera. And what you're going to see here is I'm just going to set the field of view. Um, and this is going to basically start at 30 and go through 110. So it's just going to like toggle through all the different, you know, major fields of view that you can have, but you can see the effect fairly quickly. If I just come back into Minecraft and I've got my camera rod like this. And so now you can see, okay, this is, I think a 30 degree field of view, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, this is 110. And you can see, you know, now with 110 degree field of view, it's, you know, you get a very good perspective. You can see maybe around the fringes, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit curved, you know, around the, the edges, but um, yeah, this is just, you know, the ability to set the field of view through a number of different uh, options. Um, so you can get the exact effect that you're looking for. So that's just a very quick preview of um, all the fun things with the new APIs. Um, loot, loot tables are now unlocked for your usage. Book APIs will be huge. And then, yeah, you can continue to do some very cool things with cameras as well. And with that, I'm going to go hand it over to Bryant, who's going to cover the editor version 1.10. Cool. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, really cool stuff on that. I really like the, the camera view. It really changes kind of the look and feel of everything. So I'm going to talk about Editor. So uh, with this release, we are now on version 1.1 of Editor. Uh, the investments in here, if you've been following along with the Editor journey, uh, we've talked a lot about structure improvements and really thinking differently kind of outside of the box of how you manage structures, kind of what you can do with structures, how you can edit them, uh, really looking and talking to our creators on on optimal workflows there. So we did a lot of structure improvements. A lot of these will see the light of day, uh, likely in the 1.2 timeframe, but uh, this version does have some improvements for structures. So definitely check that out. We also had a lot of improvements with our train tools and line weights, which we will dig into with some cool videos here. So next slide. So first one is line weight. So this one, uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback that, hey, it's really cool to make a line. You have to use like the extrude tool to kind of expand it. If you're building a wall, for example, um, you can't really get the organic shapes if you're doing something outside of kind of walls. And so with this update, we're allowing uh, creators to come in and per node change the weight of that. And so you can start to get some really organic looking shapes here. Uh, this example, I'm just kind of arbitrarily changing things, but you can really imagine what you can do with here. Uh, I think the time that you're watching this video in our preview build, we're also introducing a feature that's curves. And so uh, curves are going to be part of the line tool as well, where you can have curves and then adjust the individual weights of the node similarly to what you can do with line right here. And again, this really helps with some organic shapes. Imagine you want a giant tree, for example. Uh, until now, it was really difficult to build that. You're doing a lot of kind of uh, manual block placement just to make it look a little bit more organic. And so uh, you'll get that for free now with uh, this uh, update. And we'll go to the next uh, main feature in 1.1, which is our flatten tool. So until this update, you really could only flatten down to specific blocks. We've now uh, expanded the functionality. We've combined the flatten tool with just our terrain tool in general. And this has basically, you can set a level and you flatten up and flatten down to that specific level. So previously it would make a whole bunch of different holes and such in the terrain. We're making it so you can really just pick what that plane is and uh, basically add the blocks around to that level. So it's not necessarily replacing them. It will actually, in an intelligent way, 
in this case, like, hey, there's sand here or cobblestone. We're going to raise that up or lower to what kind of you would expect there, uh, not just pick a block arbitrarily. So uh, these are cool features that are going to be shipping here. Definitely check that out. Uh, with that, I'm going to be passing it to Angelica, who is going to be talking about what is next. Great. Yeah, so we've got a lot of block things. Um, I think we just touched on on a few of these. We've got some great things with the block entity interactions coming. So this one is being able to recreate things like the creaking where an entity and a block are, are connected in some way, which is going to be really cool. Um, we have on neighbor change. Um, that's going to help with things like stairs eventually. Um, so these things will be coming in over the next year or so. Um, that loot discovery API is going to be adding to what, what Mike showed with the loot generation, uh, which is great. And then we have some other things we just talked about. Camera um, splines, I'm really excited about. So this is coming very soon. It's actually going to be in a prototype and we are looking to get feedback on that and to expand on it. Um, but with that spline, uh, will actually be the capability to do a full roll. I know a lot of people have been asking for barrel rolls. So um, put it on a spline and, and try that out. Um, and then aim assist, um, Mike mentioned uh, the projectiles. Uh, we're also adding tags so that you can use um, the the player who is an aim assist can target uh, specific custom blocks and entities as well as vanilla. And then world gen, we talked about biomes, but you know, you can't have a biome without a structure. So we have some jigsaw structures uh, coming out next um, in the, the next release. And then um, other improvements around that and thinking about what else we need to make some really cool biomes. So uh, keep your eyes out for, for things coming and we'll, we'll talk again on, on some of these things in the next release. Back to Mike. All right. Well, that's an amazing set of capabilities and features that are coming across, uh, you know, future versions of Minecraft. So stay tuned to this channel, uh, to the Minecraft Creator channel for more updates. We also have our docs on learn.microsoft.com slash Minecraft slash creator. Uh, links all, of course, in the description below. But thanks for uh, tuning in to everything that's coming with 1.110. We or 1.21.110. We look forward to seeing what you build uh, with all these cool capabilities. Thanks for dropping in. Thank you. Bye.